Hello everyone, this is Satyajit Patnaik and welcome back to my channel. And today's topic is going to be the latest announcement from Microsoft Power BI, which is Power BI and Jupyter Notebooks. So in this video, I shall be going through the end-to-end -end use case. I have already created a dashboard. I will show you how to publish it, how to uh, how to do this, how to integrate it with Jupyter Notebooks, and how to extract data from the reports, and how to do the analysis and all these things. <clears throat> so whatever has been explained in this blog, I will be going through a small demo for that which will be easily understandable by you. So let's get started. In case you want to read this blog, you can definitely, uh, I'll, I'll leave this link in the description below or else you can simply uh, do a Google search regarding Power BI and Jupyter Notebooks. You will find this uh, blog in the very first page in the Google search. So let's get started guys. <clears throat> so this is a new Python package which has been introduced by Microsoft team which is Power BI client. And using that, you can easily, you know, have your dashboard on the Jupyter Notebook itself. And obviously a dashboard will have multiple, uh, multiple charts, multiple sheets, right? So uh, let's say you want to analyze a particular sheet, you can easily, uh, you can easily extract the data using da Pandas data frames, and then you can do your analysis. Okay, so let's get started. Of course, Amit, uh, who is the product manager, he has explained it very well. But while I was implementing, I got some issues. So it's quite understandable. Once you start following this blog, you also might face some issues. That was the reason I started doing this uh, video so that you will have an end to end clearing like whatever issues I faced, you will not face that. Okay, so I'll try to clear it out as simple as possible as easy way as possible. Okay, so let's get quickly started on this. Now, this is very simple. So, so he has uh, created a package, which is Power BI client. Using that package, he is uh, authenticating. Now, authentication can be done on multiple ways. If you follow their uh, GitHub repository or their demo, uh, uh, demo uh, Jupyter Notebook, you will understand that there are multiple ways of authentication, master authentication, device code authentication, and all these things. So we'll be using device code log login authentication. And uh, group ID, report ID is nothing but, it's the workspace ID and the report ID. Now, how to fetch that, I'll show you. And then we have to create an instance of the Power BI report and load the report to the output cell. And then further steps are there, which are which are not explained in this particular blog. But uh, if you just dig in further, you will find a lot of resources on that. I'll also leave that link. But definitely, if you're watching this video, this video is more than enough for you to understand about this particular package. Let's get started. So I have already I already have a Power BI Pro account because if you don't have a Pro account, you will not be able to publish a report, right? So I already have a Pro account. So the first step is obviously we have to create a dashboard. I'm not going to explain how to create a dashboard. Now this is one of the sample dashboards from one of the Kaggle data sets, hate crime in USA. I have just randomly built a dashboard. So the first thing what we need to do is we need to publish this, okay? So we have to go to publish. It's already published, but I'm showing you the steps. <clears throat> so you have to publish. Now, before that, if you don't have a workspace, the first thing what you can do is you can go to app.powerbi.com and then create a workspace. Okay. Now, if I go to app.powerbi.com, obviously you will need your AD authentication and all those things. So here, go to workspaces and create a workspace. So I have already created a testing workspace. Okay, so in the same testing workspace, I will be publishing it. Now save your changes, yes, save, and then publish it. Uh, okay, so it takes some time because of the system. My system is a little bit slow. So you can click on testing and you can publish it. Okay, now this is how it works. So I'll not replace it because I have already published it, as simple as that. Uh, and then I will go to my app.powerbi.com if I go to the same workspace testing workspace and here you will see your report and your data set now if you open your report you will see your report okay so let's get started guys uh, one of the traditional ways of seeing your report was using the iframe uh, ipython.display iframe uh, library so how this works is 
now this is a traditional way of seeing a report but you cannot do anything from this uh, uh, from this particular uh, piece of code so that was the reason why they have created a power bi client okay now what exactly is this uh, i have also written that code for this so this is nothing but once you have the report ready on the app.powerbi.com you just have to simply click on your report click on file embed report and click on website or portal so here you will get two links one will be a html code and one will be a direct embedding link so if you just copy paste this this is how it looks like okay now this is your direct direct code which can be embedded so which can so if you want to embed your power bi report in some website in some blog you can easily get uh, you can easily use this link and embed it okay as simple as that so this is this piece of code is basically doing that okay if i run this uh, as we are already authenticated on this browser so it will not ask for an authentication and here you go you, you can see this okay so let's get started with what this video is all about which is power bi client so we'll get started this is the latest method so i have power bi client import report and models so i'll just run this in this piece of code i'm just uh, importing the device code log login authentication and here i am there are two ways of uh, creating a report one could be your device authentication one one could be your access token okay so get it both the ways you can get it and once you pass here so here i am calling my access token if you don't want access token you can also use auth equals to device auth okay so let me run this uh, okay my import command is still running so just give me one more minute okay now you can see to sign in use a web browser to open the page so i have to click here i have to pass this code and uh, it will ask for the login credentials and all those things you have to uh, okay i i have to use this link and then here you go you have signed into the uh, microsoft azure cloud platform and then you can close this browser in 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 here you can already see that you have logged in interactive authentication successfully completed okay so you already have the device auth and you already have the access token if you want to just print it out you can print it out but obviously that could be uh, you know encrypted so it will not make any sense if you print it out now the main thing is how to get the group id and report id obviously it's a very basic thing if you are already a power bi developer but people who are just beginning in to learn power bi you might not understand how to get this right so again this is one of the challenge which was not present here i mean it's quite understandable that uh, these are the very basic things so group id is nothing but workspace id and report id is your report id so how to get it you have to go to your workspace now i have already clicked my workspace you can see here app.powerbi.com groups slash something so this is my group id or this is my workspace id okay and how to get the report just click on the report and it will show you the report id so you can easily copy paste this link and uh, quite quite evident that uh, this is your group id sorry uh, this is your group id and this is your report id okay obviously multiple reports will have multiple report id that's quite obvious so i'm just uh, using this and here i'm calling the report <clears throat> so this is just a small callback function and uh, you can just copy paste it and let's run the report so report equals to report group id i'm passing the group id i'm passing the report id as we already have the authentication done that is the reason we are able to see the report on jupyter notebook right now you can see it's an interactive report everything is uh, possible the report has been successfully loaded now the advantage of this particular library is that using this library you can extract the data 
you can do further analysis for example i want to analyze this particular chart now this chart if you have already worked on power bi you know that it's going to be a, it's an area chart right now this is a column chart it could be a now the, it's not a stacked column chart it's a normal column chart right similarly you have to identify which type of chart it is now my report is already there so what i'm getting is you can see i just have one page which is page 1 okay so i am getting active page equals to report dot get pages so i'm getting the first page and i'm getting the name of it and here i'm calling visuals equals to report dot visuals on page now if you want to know more about this methods you can probably go ahead and check the uh, github repository of power bi client probably if you just google it out i will get it power bi client github uh Uh, okay, I'll have to search it. I'll I'll provide that link also in case you want to know. You want you want to see uh, the internal code of what exactly Visual Sun Page does. What is this? What is that? You can go through it. Okay, so the visuals is loaded. Now what I am doing is I am just printing visuals. So this is how the visuals looks like. So it will be kind of a JSON format. Visuals is not defined. Okay, let me just run it again. Okay, you can see. column chart donut chart all these things are coming all these things are coming area chart must also be there so area chart you can see the title is incident by year which is evident that this is this one only okay i have incident id on my y axis and all these things okay so the visuals are ready so what i'm doing is i am fetching the visual with the type of column chart so obviously okay i'll i'll just change it to area chart area chart and uh, visual name i'm just printing out the visual name and here what i'm doing is summarize data equals to report dot export visual data okay from the active page from the visual name i'm exporting the data and then i am trying to read the data so this is the data now my data frame is ready now you can see this is nothing but year incident and the earliest date this is nothing but the data from this particular report now obviously this uh, this report is just having few uh, values in x axis 2014 15 16 17 18 19 and uh, obviously it's it's very less data that is the reason we are having six rows but the major thing is that by this you can extract the data Uh, using pandas data frames and from those data frames you can further analyze if you want to and all these things okay now if you want you can also print this particular thing in your charts and you can do your ad and all these things so n number of reports you have so n number of data frames you can create and then combine it play around with it do eda whatever you want to do the main idea of this library is that it's accessible through jupyter notebook you can analyze it and then further dig further and you know do your exploration data exploration of data okay let's get started let's get uh, let's uh, get ahead with it so i have already created a filter report now what i have done is i have blindly followed amit's uh, uh, blog and i have done this kind of things so here what i'm doing is i'm i'm creating an external filter <coughs> so filter report bias desk so how this code has come if you just google it out uh, filters javascript filters uh, in power bi you will get it so in the latest uh, you know latest update as it's a python library i think what they have done is they have just used the javascript filters and directly they are you know using directly in the python as it is very minute changes are there but you don't have to worry about all these things so you can see schema schema basic target table column operator values so what they are doing is they are as it is using in the python itself so what we have done you can see same piece of code but yeah uh, here we just have table here we are having table like in a quotes so this is how python works right so we have created a filter here i'm doing report dot remove filters and then updating filters with this filter so i'll run this code and here i'm using the py widgets ipy widgets uh, interact 
library and then using interact i will be loading the report okay let's do that so interact i'll just uh, remove this not required it does not required so let it let it uh, okay so you can see so i have just passed two bias descriptions now what are bias descriptions you can see anti jewish okay because anti jewish is selected so that is the reason uh, you know uh, let let's do that let's let's see you can see in bias desks there are multiple values right anti black or african american anti jewish anti white anti gay anti uh, something or latino all these are valid values so just i have arbitrarily passed two values that's it just to check if my filter is working or not now you can see my report is loaded if i just change it see so it's a dynamic filter which is working similarly you can create multiple filters with this is just with a arbitrarily i have created with bias description you can also create with incident id with year whatever you want to do so the main idea is that you can easily you know easily access the power bi reports in jupyter notebooks and do this kind of r and d stuffs you can you can do eda and all these things so that is all about this particular update and i hope you got it now one of the issues i faced i will also talk about that one of the issues i faced was when i was running this report i was not able to get the output in this particular screen so what fixes i did uh now i cannot show you that error but uh, i will just give you a tips okay so what i did is i was just running this report and i was not getting output so what i did was i went to the uh, developer options in this console uh, let me just uh, remember what i had done okay so i had i had gone to the settings option and here uh, this was enabled i okay let me let me show you that enable javascript and enable uh, Second, enable CSS. Okay, let me now close it, and now let me run this. You can see the report is run, but I'm not able to see the output here. That was the issue which I was facing. Okay, it's it's done. I'm not sure why it was not uploading. Probably. if we change this i think restart of browser is required but ultimately if you don't find this report then you have to go to the developer options press f12 once you press f12 go to the settings and in the settings option you have to go to the sources in the sources you will have this enable javascript source maps and enable css source maps so you have to disable it once you disable it just restart the browser and done it will work okay so this is all about the update guys i tried to keep it very simple and uh, that's it and one more thing uh, there are there is also a new update which is related uh, related to the power bi embedded playground so playground dot power bi dot com there are a lot of options i'll not be covering in this particular video but i'll have separate videos for this uh, so that's it from my side for this particular video i hope you like the session i hope you like the video in case you liked please like uh, share and subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon if you haven't hit so that you get notified on my future videos and that's it from my side thank you